Philippians chapter 4 this morning. Wasn't that wonderful? My mind and my heart has gone back to that night when I was 13 years old and I was sitting in the Monroe Civic Center listening to the old cathedral quartet. And Glenn Payne began to sing, We Shall See Jesus. And I'll never forget as long as I live that that's when Jesus came to me. And he began to convict me that night. I didn't go to him, he came to me. And he began to convict me of my sin. And he began to show me my need for a Savior. I hear all the time, preacher, I can't go to him. Well, you don't have to. Because you can't go to him anyway. But he came to you first. He's been lifted up this morning. And he's drawing all men unto him. And when I could not go to him, he came to me. And he showed me that I was lost. And without a relationship with him, that I would die and I would go to that place called hell. He showed me that religion was not going to cut it. He showed me that my daddy being a preacher wasn't going to get me there. Folks, he came to me. And where sin abound, grace did much more abound. And from that day until this day, 22 years later, he still comes to me. When I don't know what to do, he comes to me. When I don't know where to turn, he comes to me. When I don't know how I'm going to make it through, he comes to me. When I feel like nobody cares, he comes to me. When I don't have the answers, he comes to me. When this daddy don't know what to do with his children, he comes to me. When this husband don't know what to do and which way to turn, he comes to me. And I've never gone through a valley that he wasn't there leading me through. And I hadn't faced a storm and I hadn't gone through the fire that he wasn't there already. And when I think I'm without hope and when I think there's no way to keep on going, he came to me. And he picked me up and he set my feet upon a rock. And he established my goings. And he picked me up out of that miry clay. And he didn't do it because I'm religious enough. He didn't do it because I'm good enough. He did it because he came to me. Because he loves me in spite of me. Where sin abound, grace did much more abound. If I die today, I'm going to heaven. And I know that I know that I know that he's taking care of my eternity and he's taking care of my every day. Not because I'm holy. Not because I'm right. But because of who he is. He came to me. A 13 year old boy. He came to me. Philippians chapter 4. Stand please. I don't know which way to go. So I'm just going to follow the Lord. Philippians 4 and verse 7. I want to go to one verse. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for your word. And I thank you for the peace of God. As I remember as a 13-year-old boy, you come to me and you begin to convict me of my sin. And I remember the fear of hell. 
I remember it like it was yesterday. But you came to me and you told me that you would save my soul if I called out to you. And I did and you did. I called out and you saved me. And you gave me the peace of God that day. And you flooded my soul with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. And you give me a peace that passeth all understanding. I didn't understand it all. I didn't have to because you were deep down in my soul. I want to thank you for that peace that passeth all understanding. And every day as I struggle along in this old world, you give me the peace of God. In the trial, you give me the peace of God. In adversity, you give me the peace of God. Thank you for that peace that passeth all understanding. Give me help this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you very briefly on the peace of God. The peace of God. Peace is the absence of or end of strife. It means to rest. And the Apostle Paul here is writing to the church of Philippi, and he said that it is possible for you to have for you to enjoy the peace of God. And when the Apostle Paul says that you can have the peace of God, he's simply saying that God can cause you to rest. God can cause you to rest in the midst of what you're going through. When he said that you can have the peace of God, he's simply saying that God can enter into your life and deal with things in your life to the point and place that you can have some rest in this old world. I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad of the day that I fought that place called hell that God came in and Jesus came into my soul and put an end to the strife and put an end to the fear of that place called hell. I fear a lot of things, but I don't fear hell anymore because God has brought peace in my life to that place and I don't struggle with hell anymore. I struggle with a lot of things, but God has put an end to that strife. I don't have to worry about the penalty of sin anymore because one day he came to me and he saved my soul and that's done. I don't lay in bed at night worried if I've done good enough during the day to go to heaven because he has caused that to an end. He has put an end to that strife. I am sealed and saved forevermore. He brought peace to my life about my salvation. I don't lay in bed and worry about dying. I don't lay in bed worried about where I'm going to go because he's put an end to that. And I've got peace. And if I die today, I'm going to heaven. And I know and I know. I get so sick of asking people, if you die today, where are you going? They say, well, I'm going to heaven, I hope. I'm going to heaven, I think. My, the salvation I read of in the Bible is not a hope so salvation. It's a no so salvation. He's put an end to the strife of sin. I don't worry about the penalty of sin anymore because he's put an end to it. Notice what he said here in the scripture. In the peace of God which passeth all understanding that God can bring a peace. He can bring a confidence to us that doesn't even make sense. It passeth all understanding. You say, preacher, explain to me why you don't worry about hell anymore. To be honest, I can't really explain it all. But deep down in my heart, there is a confidence and assurance that I don't have to worry about that anymore because it passeth all understanding. When people are running around worried about the end of times, child of God, we ought not worry about it. Because he's put an end to that strife in our life. And we found peace in that. We don't have to worry about that anymore. And you say, you're not worried? No. Well, preacher, that don't even make sense. Passeth all understanding, doesn't it? Well, that doesn't make sense. It don't have to make sense. If you believe it, God reveals it to you. And deep down in my heart and deep down in your heart, you know there's a place called heaven. And you are convinced and persuaded by, beyond all comprehension that if something happened to you today, you're going to heaven. That don't make sense. It passeth all understanding. 
Why aren't you worried about what's going on in this world, preacher? You ought to be fretting. You ought to be worried. Friend, we ought to have the peace of God. God ought to put an end in our life to all of this worry and to all of this stress. Child of God, we ought not worry about all of this. We ought to have peace. Well, aren't you concerned about how you're going to feed your children? Aren't you concerned about this, the economy? Passeth all understanding. We're going to trust God and God's going to take care. Peace that passeth all understanding. Don't make sense. It don't have to, folks. When God's in it, it doesn't have to. Beyond all comprehension, He's given me a peace deep down in my heart and my soul. When I ought to be worried, I'm not. When I ought to be concerned, I'm praising. That's the peace of God. Passeth all understanding. I love this. That keeps, notice this, that keeps your heart. Deep down in my heart, I know. I have a confidence. I have assurance. A lot of people is in turmoil. A lot of people's worried to death. Child of God, you ought not worry to death because the peace of God ought to keep your hearts. There ought not be any doubt. There ought not be any question in your heart. You ought not to be running here, there, or yonder. If you know the Word of God and you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, He has given you the peace of God. That keeps your hearts and keeps your mind. He keeps me sane. Don't laugh at that. I'm sane. I hope. That keeps me straight. I would lose my mind if I didn't have the peace of God. As a daddy raising three children, if I didn't have the peace of God, I would go nuts. But the peace of God keeps my heart and my mind. He keeps me in line with His Word. He keeps me in line with His will. He keeps me in line with His way. The peace of God keeps my mind and my heart that I don't go crazy over everything that I face, that I can trust Him. You say, preacher, that don't make sense. It don't have to, folks. Peace that passeth all understanding. I want to ask you today, are you enjoying the peace of God in your life? Are you enjoying the peace of God in your life? I want you to look with me in the book of John chapter 14. And if you're with me, say amen. John chapter 14. In this peace that I speak of, this peace that I talk about this morning, Understand that this peace is, is found in one place. It's not found in multiple places. It's not found in multiple things. It's found in one particular place. Notice what Jesus himself said in John 14 and verse 27. He said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Child of God, we need the peace that Jesus can offer. We need the peace that he can come in and give us. Notice what he said. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He said, you don't need the peace the world can offer you. You need the peace that I and I alone can offer you. You need the peace that can only come from Jesus Christ. The peace that Jesus Christ gives us is an everlasting peace. It is an everlasting confidence. The peace that we find in worldly things will only last a little while. The things in the Word of God, the things that I have been taught, the things that God has taught me, I have that for all of eternity. And every time something goes wrong, I have the Scripture, I have the Lord, I have Jesus leading me and guiding me. And he said, me and me alone, I can bring peace into your life. I can put an end to the strife that you're going through. There is not a power in this world that can put an end to the strife that you're going through except for Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus is the only source for the peace that I speak of this morning. Because there's only one that can put an end to the strife. If you want peace, you've got to put an end to the problem. 
You got to put an end to the confusion. The opposite of peace is confusion. May I tell you there's confusion in homes in America today. The homes in America, the schools in America, the churches in America, we have more confusion than we've ever had before. You know why? Because we're looking to everyone and everything for peace except for Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can put an end to the strife that we go through. He's the only one that can bring peace to our home, to our church, to our family. He is the Prince of Peace. And he can put an end to the strife that we're going through. Look in Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We've been talking about having the peace of God. And a lot of times we struggle getting the peace of God because we've never made peace with God. And you notice in Romans uh, chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Many of us have not had the end to the strife. We have not experienced the peace of God because we've never made peace with God. Understand today that the most important relationship in your life is your standing with the Almighty God. The most important guiding relationship who will guide you for who you are is your relationship with your Creator. And I want you to know today that God loves you. And He's done everything to save your soul. Amen? He's done everything that He can do to save your soul. You need to make peace with God. We have been alienated. We have been divided because of our sin. Me and God cannot fellowship. Me and God is not on the same level or on the same playing field because I'm a sinner and I come short of the glory of God. I come short of that glory every single day of the week. Understand, I need to make peace with God. Everybody searching the peace of God without making peace with God. Let me tell you, if you want God's help, you need to get right with God. There are some things in your life in order for God to come in and put an end to things, you need to get some things right with the Lord. What is your standing with God today? What is your standing with God? God will not overlook your sin. God will not overlook the penalty of your sin if you don't come to him and ask for the forgiveness of your sins. Well, preacher, I mean, I was raised in church. I had a good mamma that drug me to church and I went to Bible school. It doesn't matter your church attendance. What is your standing with the Almighty God today? As God looks at your life, and your life is, a, is an open book to the Almighty God, everything is naked to the eye of God in your life. He knows every hair on your head. And I love as the speaker said last week, he, know, he counts your sneezes. Isn't that an Almighty God? What a powerful God that knows everything about you. And you sit here today, and you seek the peace of God. You seek the peace of God, but have you been willing to make peace with God? Those things in your life that you have swept under the rug and you kept trying to hide from the family and hide from this and hide from that and you may have been successful, but you didn't hide it from God. You'll never have the peace of God until you make peace with God. And we run along and we think, man, we want the things of God without actually getting right with God. Oh, we want God's heaven, we want God's peace, we want God's joy without doing it God's way. If you want what he has to offer, you got to come his way. You have to come his way and you've got to make peace with God. We, we eat, 
We do fundraisers, we do uh, ministries, we do this, we do that, we do games, we play basketball, and I praise God for it all. But folks, that's not why we exist as a church. The reason we exist to the church is tell this dying world that they need to get right with God. There is a sin there that must be dealt with, and we can ignore this and ignore that. But your bad standing with God will not be ignored. Your sin will not be ignored. It has to be dealt with. It has to be dealt with. And I'm telling you, you can have the peace of God today if you make peace with God. Make peace with God. Get things straight with God so that He can give you the peace of God. Woo! Preacher, you come in here and you jump on my toes and I feel bad. Man, you make me feel horrible. I got to swallow that pill before I can give it. I used to get so mad at my dad. Man, man, it's like he'd come in on Sunday and just preach how I lived all week. Like you, sorry, sucker. Man, that'd get mad. And it was God using his man to get me where I needed to be. And it was God's way of saying, Josh, I don't accept what you're doing. And I want you to get right. And I want you to deal with it. And I want you to handle it. And if you'll handle it and make peace with me, then I'll give you my peace. And you can live and walk in my peace. Now I want you to look in Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. I'm telling you folks, it doesn't matter. Let the world go by. Let it all go by. Let the riches go by. At the end of the day, what is your standing with God? Where do you stand with the Almighty God? Have you made things right with Him? Have you repented of your sin? Have you turned from your ways? Are you walking with Him? Friend, it doesn't matter how you are with fellow mankind. How are you with God? Man, He gets along with His neighbors. He gets along with this one. He gets along. But what about do we get along with God? Are we in good standing with the Lord? And you may sit here this morning and you say, Preacher, man, I'll tell you there's a lot of wrong between me and God. I talked to a man not long ago that was so mad and bitter at God because of his child that died at an early age. And he told me, he said, Preacher, there's no loving God. He's a mean God. And he just began to go through and this man was mad at God. Thinking, man, there ain't nothing I can say or do. He just needs to get right with the Lord. And you go through life and you find people that were so weighted down with the sin of this world and we're living in this confusion. Folks, we don't have to live this way anymore. He can put an end to the sin and to the strife in your life. You say, preacher, you don't know where I come from. I don't have to because I know where Jesus came from. Preacher, you don't know what I've done. I don't have to because I know what Jesus has done. And I'm telling you, as you look at this preacher, I'm the chiefest of sinners. I, I came from the same seat of sin just like you did. I'm, I'm the chiefest of sinners. I'm telling you, I should die and go to hell today, but I'm not going to because one day he came to me. And where sin abound, grace did much more abound. And he gloriously saved my soul and bought me and redeemed me and forgave me of my sins. And I'm telling you today, he come into my my life and he put an end to the strife that I was going through. Preacher, you don't know where I've been. Bless God, I know where you need to go this morning. I know where you need to go. Man, I'm telling you, there's no sinner gone too far. There's no relationship too, too broken. I'm telling you, there's nobody in this room that the grace of God can't reach down and straighten out today. I'm telling you, look here in Colossians. Man, I may just start shouting. Man, I love this verse. And having made peace, whoo, we need to make peace. We need to make peace before we can get peace. And we need to make peace with God through going to Sunday school, through going to church, through tithing, through baptism. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, we need to make peace by doing good deeds. Lord, have mercy. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. 
by Him, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself. I love this. By Him I say, <laughs> listen, by Him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, the only way to make peace is through the blood of His cross. Wow. And I thought all I had to do was take a pill. Y'all laugh. But I'm on a bunch of pills. I thought all I had to do was take this 10-step process. It's out there, folks. And this world has convinced us of other ways of seeking peace. God said the only way to find true peace is through the blood of his cross. To find forgiveness of your sins. You have stayed up at night long enough dealing with the guilt of your sin. Dealing with what you've gone through in life. You listen to me. If you would lay it down today and put it in the hands of Jesus, his precious blood will wash you white as snow and he'll forgive you of your sin. Preacher, you don't understand. I've done this and I've done that. His blood will forgive you of your sins. And you can have peace today. You can have peace today by the blood of the cross. You've carried this weight. You've carried the burden. You've carried the penalty. You've carried it all. Friend, you don't have to carry it from this place anymore. God's in the business of setting us free from the bondage of sin. God's in the business of setting us free from the things that has weighed us down. There's been a battle in your soul. There's been a battle in your mind. And Jesus is willing to put an end to the sin and strife going on in your life. He'll bring you peace today. He'll set you free today. <laughs> He'll redeem you today. Oh. I don't know what I'd do without the peace of God. Whew. To know that God's got it all handled. To know that no matter what happens in this whole world, God has got it all settled. He's brought peace. Let the storms rage. He came to me. And he gave me the peace of God. Because I made peace with God. And I made peace with God. Because I made it through the blood of the cross. I'm not the Lord. And I don't know what he's doing this morning. But as I look out, I look at a bunch of people that's going through the same strife, fighting the same battles. We are counted as sheep to the slaughter. Friend, this it's bad out there. This world is getting worse and worse. And Jesus is coming back. He's coming back to put an end to the strife. Child of God, are you resting in Jesus today? Are you resting in the hope of the Scriptures? Are you resting in what He's done for you? You know why I can rest? Because He's taken my past and He's throw it, thrown it in the sea of forgetfulness. I don't have to look at Him anymore because He forgave me and I've moved on. I don't know if I could pastor in West Monroe, Louisiana. Every time I go back to preach, people just go to, to see if this is real. There's no way that sucker made a preacher. Man, I just want to know if it's real. I told y'all this before, it's bad when your mama prays, man, that Lord, if you could just keep him out of prison, he'll make a good preacher. God's been good to me, folks. Because I made peace with him. I've settled, the account is settled. I've been paid in full. I've applied it to my life. And all of those things that I can't help or can't control, I put it in the hands of the Lord. And He carries me through. But I wonder how many here today has never been saved. And it's time to be saved today. It doesn't matter if you're 8 years old or 80. If you hadn't made peace with God, 
It's time to make peace with God. It's time to settle the old account and understand that it's been paid in full this morning. 